Time is precious. The world revolves around it, as do the financial markets. When it comes to trading Forex, the largest market in the world, even a millisecond makes a difference. At FXTM, we work around the clock to provide you with effective trading services. Whether you're a small or big investor, access all financial markets through our advanced mobile, desktop and web trading platforms. Experience the smoothest trading thanks to our innovative technology and trading conditions. Take advantage of one of the fastest execution times in the industry. Save time with quick and simple deposits and withdrawals. We are a regulated, trusted broker, so you don't have to waste any time worrying about the safety of your funds. Our multilingual team is always on call to help you. And our experts bring trader education to the next level. Knowledge is power. So the more you learn, the faster you can reach financial freedom. At FXTM, we take the time to focus on you, so that you'll have time and money to spend on what matters to you most. Time is money. Invest it wisely. in the book there is no faith and no courage and no sacrifice in doing what is expedient what do you say to those viewers that don't pursue their dreams and are locked in their careers because they are too afraid to take risks and pursue something mm -hmm. meaningful well the first thing I would say is well you should be afraid of taking risks and pursuing something meaningful but you should be more afraid of staying where you are if it's making you miserable You're paying a price by sitting there being miserable. You might say, well, the devil I know is better than the one I don't. It's like, don't be so sure of that. The clock is ticking. Yeah, and if you're miserable in your job now and you change nothing, in five years you'll be much more miserable and you'll be a lot older. But isn't so, it a luxury to pursue what is meaningful? Our viewers have mortgages, they have children, yeah. they have payments and loans. It's well, a luxury to pursue because we, we lack the resources. Well, I don't think, I don't remember now, I'm not talking about what makes you happy. It's a luxury to pursue what makes you happy. It's a moral obligation to pursue what you find meaningful. And that doesn't mean it's easy. It might require sacrifice. If you need to change your job too, let's say you have a family and, 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 and children and, and a mortgage, you have responsibilities. You've already picked up those responsibilities. You don't just get to walk away scot-free and say, well, I don't like my job, I quit. That's no strategy. But what you might have to do is you think, well, this job is killing my soul. All right, so what do I have to do about that? Well, I have to look for another job. Well, no one wants to hire me. It's like, okay, maybe you need to educate yourself more. Maybe you need to update your, your curriculum vitae, your resume. Maybe you need to overcome your fear of being interviewed. Maybe you need to sharpen your social skills. Like, you, you have to think about these things strategically. If you're going to switch careers, you have to do it like an intelligent, responsible person. That might take you a couple of years of, of, of effort to do properly. We're built for struggle, us human beings. We're built to contend with the world. We're built to contend with reality. You want a challenge, and the best way that you can take on a challenge, because a challenge fortifies you. So you don't want to be secure, you want to be strong. And you get strong by taking on optimal challenges. And so you lay out your destiny in the world, and you take the slings and arrows of fate. And you make yourself stronger while you're doing so. And you might fail, and fortune might do you in. But it's your best bet. And, you know, people have, had, have extracted unbelievable successes out of catastrophic failures. And so, and I'm not saying that in a naive way. I know perfectly well what happens to people, you know. You're doing fine in life, and then you get cancer. And then six months later, you're dead. And all the heroism in the world isn't going to save you at that point. But that's not the point. That's not the point. Life is bounded by mortality. But that doesn't mean that you don't get out there and contend. And you develop 
by contending and you minimize the net amount of suffering in the world. And that's something, man, that's something to do. Time is precious. The world revolves around it, as do the financial markets. When it comes to trading Forex, the largest market in the world, even a millisecond makes a difference. At FXTM, we work around the clock to provide you with effective trading services. Whether you're a small or big investor, access all financial markets through our advanced mobile, desktop and web trading platforms. Experience the smoothest trading thanks to our innovative technology and trading conditions. Take advantage of one of the fastest execution times in the industry. Save time with quick and simple deposits and withdrawals. We are a regulated, trusted broker, so you don't have to waste any time worrying about the safety of your funds. Our multilingual team is always on call to help you. And our experts bring trader education to the next level. Knowledge is power. So the more you learn, the faster you can reach financial freedom. At FXTM, we take the time to focus on you, so that you have time and money to spend on what matters to you most. Time is money. Invest it wisely. in the book there is no faith and no courage and no sacrifice in doing what is expedient what do you say to those viewers that don't pursue their dreams and are locked in their careers because they are too afraid to take risks and pursue something mm -hmm. meaningful well the first thing I would say is well you should be afraid of taking risks and pursuing something meaningful but you should be more afraid of staying where you are if it's making you miserable You're paying a price by sitting there being miserable. You might say, well, the devil I know is better than the one I don't. It's like, don't be so sure of that. The clock is ticking. Yeah, and if you're miserable in your job now and you change nothing, in five years, you'll be much more miserable and you'll be a lot older. But isn't so, it a luxury to pursue what is meaningful? Our viewers have mortgages, they have children, yeah. they have payments and loans. It's well, a luxury to pursue because we, we lack the resources. Well, I don't think, I don't remember now, I'm not talking about what makes you happy. It's a luxury to pursue what makes you happy. It's a moral obligation to pursue what you find meaningful. And that doesn't mean it's easy. It might require sacrifice. If you need to change your job too, let's say you have a family and, 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 and children and, and a mortgage, you have responsibilities. You've already picked up those responsibilities. You don't just get to walk away scot-free and say, well, I don't like my job, I quit. That's no strategy. But what you might have to do is you think, well, this job is killing my soul. All right, so what do I have to do about that? Well, I have to look for another job. Well, no one wants to hire me. It's like, okay, maybe you need to educate yourself more. Maybe you need to update your, your curriculum vitae, your resume. Maybe you need to overcome your fear of being interviewed. Maybe you need to sharpen your social skills. Like, you, you have to think about these things strategically. If you're going to switch careers, you have to do it like an intelligent, responsible person. That might take you a couple of years of, of, of effort to do properly. We're built for struggle, us human beings. We're built to contend with the world. We're built to contend with reality. You want a challenge, and the best way that you can take on a challenge, because a challenge fortifies you. So you don't want to be secure, you want to be strong. And you get strong by taking on optimal challenges. And so you lay out your destiny in the world, and you take the slings and arrows of fate. And you make yourself stronger while you're doing so. And you might fail, and fortune might do you in. But it's your best bet. And, you know, people have, had, have extracted unbelievable successes out of catastrophic failures. 
And so, and I'm not saying that in a naive way. I know perfectly well what happens to people. You know, you're doing fine in life and then you get cancer. And then six months later, you're dead. And all the heroism in the world isn't going to save you at that point. But that's not the point. That's not the point. Life is bounded by mortality. But that doesn't mean that you don't get out there and contend. And you develop by contending and you minimize the net amount of suffering in the world. And that's something, man. That's something to do. Welcome to Bull Market Stock Show. This is your host, Rian Hobson, and we're doing actually today, oh gosh, some, some terrible um, news for South Africa. Um, on, the first of, on the 1st of March, um, the new minimum wages will kick in. Um, that is now an increase of the minimum wages that was introduced in 2019. Um, and this one will be a bit steep, um, and it will not be so good. Like in, in 2019, it was introduced... Um, if I need to look at specifically um, at farm workers um, and then also domestic workers and their hourly earnings and how did it affect them in 2019. So obviously you have to look at previous data to actually confirm um, the, the result of the effects of the of the minimum wage. So I will go through it um, because obviously you guys are shocked now to, because I said like one million people will lose their job in South Africa. But if you look at the previous data, then I'm not a drunk or even high. Um, but please uh, don't forget to register on the link below on the description um, um, for your free account, for Forex trading account. And also you can get your free signals as well when you register. And so basically you just have to fund your account, um, register the account, fund the account, and then I will give you free classes and also give you free signals. Also, very importantly, um, I can also... Um, uh, get your f if you don't have the time to trade we can also link you up with some robots which can trade for you now there is very good robots around um, and i can also link your account to that um, well there's some robots that really makes a lot of money and um, some of them that are really crap but i will select with you the best robots and then you will be able to trade with it now one of them is mine um, but so I will obviously be very honest with you when I select my robot or look at the other robots. But first thing or first step is to register on the account um, and then get the, then fund the account, get your free signals, get your classes. And also you have the option to not trade for yourself, but let a robot um, do the job for you. Um, but that is now your choice. So you just have to register on the link below now. Let's get to today's topic, and that is now the minimum wages that will get passed on the 1st of March this year. That was now by the Labour uh, Minister that ruined everything um, in, in COVID, uh, during COVID actually, that could not even pay UIF out to people. And now he also introduced now the new minimum wage laws and with a steep increase. Now, in 2018, sorry, in 2019, the farm, farm workers got about 18 rand an hour. And domestic workers around 15, 15 rand an hour. Now, for the average person or you that is listening to it, you would think, ah, it is small. Why can't the people just earn more? Um, but there's consequences to this. Um, so in 2020, um, that was now um, last year, it increased by 18. Excuse me. It, it increased by, by 18 rand 68. That is now for farm workers. Domestic workers, it increased by 15 uh, 15 rand 57 so the so the increase was not so severe now in 2021 it will increase to 21 rand 69 cents for farm workers and then for domestic workers it will be 19 rand 9 cents per hour now 
also on other uh, on other increase of minimum wage is also for your hospitality industry. Um, that is now your restaurants, the waiters, uh, they will also uh, get your minimum wage. So the minimum wage is across the board. It's not just for farm workers and domestic workers. It's across the board. So that's why they call it the national minimum wage. Now, I was looking at some uh, some data on, on, on when it was actually installed. That was now on the 1st of January uh, 2019. And this is what I got. Now, in that period alone, from the 1st of January until March, 237,000 people lost their jobs. Just in that period alone. And if you don't believe me, you can go look at the data. Out of that 200 and, and 237,000 people that lost their jobs, 34,000 domestic workers lost their jobs. On top of that, 80,000 farm workers lost their jobs. And then the rest is spread all over with your hospitality industry and then you have your manufacturing and so on. So close to 240,000 people lost their job with that introduction of minimum wage in 2019. And that was just in the first quarter. Now, when the year progressed, uh, progressed until... Um, now, the unemployment rate for, for, for 2019 was about 27%. After the first quarter, it jumped to 29%. By the end of the year, which was now in the beginning, um, um, uh, 1st, of, 1st of January uh, 2020, 2020, the unemployment rate reached 30%. And, and the thing is, it's not a myth. Because the moment, if you look at a chart, the moment they introduced that minimum wage, you could see in the chart there the minimum wage come in, and there the unemployment rate start to start to rise as well. Now this policy sounds good to the ordinary people. There's a lot of farmers or farm workers that want more. But you must now remember, for a farmer. To produce cheap products for you and I to eat at home. He needs to produce those goods at a cheap cost. That's why we have goods at our home that we can afford. Now if he raise or the government tell him that he must raise the wages for, uh, for his workers. Then it means you and I will pay more for the goods on our table. Now, it sounds easy for you and I because we can afford these things. Basic stuff like your, um, your, your veggies and, 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 and your potatoes and those type of things. What for the average person on the street or the person that's on social grounds, will they afford it? Or the unemployed people because there's, there's approximately over 10 million people unemployed, or 17 million, sorry, that are unemployed. How the hell will they afford if the food prices go up? So now what happens is that people buy less goods now um, um, because of the prices that are increasing. Like, for example, if you take example with the potatoes, people bought less potatoes and then they actually made more spaghetti. That is what will happen. So obviously now people buy less potatoes, so which means um, the, the, the farmer needs to produce less, uh, less the, uh, potatoes of course, what he will do is let go of his workers. As simple as that. Because he needs to produce less. Because he needs to reduce his price. So the consequences of this minimum law is severe. There's nowhere in the world, nowhere in the world, where minimum wages actually work. There is no such thing. It's all rhetoric. That politicians talk, no, we need to fight the inequality. Listen, you're not fighting any inequality with that fucking stupid law. No way in hell. Only thing that you do is put people more in poverty. For, the, for, for, for bartenders, um, uh, for, 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 for people that, that are actually in the, in, the, in the hospitality industry, it will be worse. Because now you had COVID. What about the wine farms? People, people, the wine farms that are, that are being closed, and now on top of that, you need to pay the workers more. What about the, 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 the restaurants as well? Restaurants has been dead. 
because of all the rubbish restrictions and now on top of that you are forced to pay the people more. So what you will do? Close the bloody shop or you will use less waiters. Because you must remember also the, 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 the tips that these waiters are getting has nothing to do with the minimum wage. That is a basic wage that you need to pay your, your worker. That is now law by the government, the most stupidest fucking law that you can get. It only leads to more unemployment. And then on top of that, it's very difficult for people to actually to get a job because of the minimum wage. Because what normally happens is that they price out the people or the, the unskilled people. Because now, an entrepreneur, because he needs to pay the person now about four 4,000 rand, so he will like, listen, yeah, I would rather get someone who, who are skilled up, and he will not employ the unskilled person. Because now the unskilled person is already being priced out because of the minimum wage. So for you that are unskilled to get a job, it's impossible. It's totally impossible because of minimum wages. Because one thing that you must remember, when you get a job as an unskilled person, you will make mistakes. Who's going to pay for that mistakes? Your entrepreneur. So for him to cut that down, he will allow rather someone that knows the job with less mistakes, so which, because he needs to cut his cost because he needs to pay the person minimum wages. Now your unskilled ass will not get a job. You are done. Because he will not take that risk with you because you will make a lot of mistakes because of minimum wage. Now, I don't understand. Does the government don't understand the bloody results of minimum wages? Because in the United States, they, they, the Republicans actually blocked the minimum wages because they know what would be the consequence of minimum wages. Look, even in the Great Depression... In, in, in the United States, the moment when they introduced minimum wage, the whole bloody economy collapsed in 1930. And you can go look, uh, you can go look at the data as well. Only thing that the politicians uh, the, the politicians are good at is talking shit. That's it. That that's fucking it. They just know how to how to tell people, oh, uh, minimum wage will earn more. No, that is not in the fucking real world. In the real world, the story bloody change. Because there it is about rents and cents. And if you are expensive, you will not get a fucking job. As simple as bloody that. Now, if 240,000 people lost their jobs in one bloody quarter, and by the end of the year, it was sitting at approximately at close to 500,000, and there was no pandemic. Now, what do you think will just this new uh, minimum wage laws, that the, the, or the increase in the, in the minimum wage, actually will do? In a pandemic. So you will definitely get more unemployment. So my one million projection that I put there, that is not a myth. Because if over 500,000 people lost their job in 2019, you can imagine what is going to happen in 2021. You know what, Ramaphosa has no fuck. You know what, what makes it funny? He will come on the State of the State of the Nation address and talk about the bloody minimum wages that he introduces. That guy produced just the most fucked up laws that you can ever, what you can ever fucking imagine. You know what, he and his fucking ugly big nose is just irritate the shit out of me every, every time I bloody switch on the social media. Because there's no way in hell how the hell you can put up minimum wages on a pandemic. Look, the whole bloody thing of minimum wages doesn't work at all. It's very simple. If you don't have the skills, you can't expect to just earn a lot of money. It, just, it, it, it is far from fucking common sense. If you go to finish your school, go to university, or, or build yourself up with skills, of course you will earn more. Of course, you will earn more. But you can't just fucking think that you, you, you don't finish school and you want to get a fucking good job and then you think you must... Look, it just doesn't fucking work like that. You need to finish school. You need to do the proper things. Get yourself skilled up and, get, and, and then fucking get a job. But no, you, you, you're lazy fucking ass. You don't want to actually finish school and now you actually gang up a lot of people, and then you burn down shit, and then you force the government now 
to introduce this. I will not say you force the government now. The government actually like your stupid ass because you will believe every shit that you say because you can't fucking finish school and now we have to sit with a fucking minimum wage and you will still not fucking get a job. It is really fucking irritating. There's all this shit laws from fucking COVID to now fucking minimum wage. And then on top of that, you have the Reserve Bank also that enforce actually capital controls. It is just getting out of hand, all these fucking laws. You can't write any shit laws and you don't actually look at the result of these laws. The result of these laws cause about over 500,000 people to lose their job in one fucking year. So now you actually pushed another law, or I would say you increased it. And you know what? The increase are so fucking steep. It's about 16%. That is for farmer, farm workers. And then on top of that, for domestic workers, no, like 16%. Yeah, 23% for domestic workers. That is way above inflation. And you know what? S the same thing happened in 2012. I don't know if you guys can remember in the wine farms, where the, where the farmers actually went on a rampage there in 2012, by the, it was by the end of the year, and then it was burning and looting and all those things that happened, and then the government came in there and increased the people's wages by 50%. What happened? They all get kicked out. People lost their jobs. They didn't benefit at all. More people lost their jobs. Farms are actually closed. And you know what? It, this will be funny. When I looked through the data yesterday of how minimum wage affect farmers, about in 2008, say around there, in 2008, there was about 800,000 farm, farm workers. Today, it sits at 600,000. So 200,000 already lost their jobs until now, in 10 years. In, all, in just over 10 years. And, uh, and it hit so hard from 2012, from 2013, where they increased the, the wages with 50%. From there on, from that point, you can just see how that chart goes down. And it's just getting worse and worse and worse. And, and the government is so quick to exploit the situation because they understand your dumbass. And they like to talk about emotions because in the data, there's no emotions. There's no such thing as, as, as fucking emotions here. It's black and white statistics, finish and clear. You can't actually argue with it. Now you come your emotions. No, you want to earn more. Then, then, then fucking finish school or go, go do something. Skill yourself up. And the thing is also, with, with, with what I picked up is the, is the heavy battle. The heavy, heavy battle. With black farmers. Black farmers struggle the most when it comes to this minimum wage story. Just go read it up. And when I looked at the minimum wages, you must now know, a lot of new farmers that come into the industry are black. So the main thing that they will do is be labor intensive because they are new. And on top of that, they will actually rather employ more of your skilled people. Obviously, they will have more people at working, but they, they, they employ normally your skilled people because they need assistance. And then on top of that, they need assistance themselves from other people to help them mentoring to get the whole thing done. At the end of the day, the bloody salary bills is so high, then he needs to close the bloody shop or the farm. The, 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 the biggest killer, what I picked up for new black farmers, is actually the minimum wage. And what people don't understand, the cost of producing food and the selling price of producing food is extremely narrow. It's extremely narrow. Any increases, then it means you... And, and the thing is, those farmers are sitting with products that are extremely, extremely sensitive to climate, uh, weather changes, um, um, the transportation of these goods. It's extremely delicate products. And it can quickly get rotten. And the shops, normally, your, your big retail stores, 
uh, are very, um, I would say, they are just plain nuts. Because they will not buy stuff if there's, if there's one rotten potato or maybe a few, then they will not buy it. So then the whole bloody uh, stuff needs to get thrown away. And who's paying for this? The farmers. That's why South Africa wastes so much food every day and every year. So now you need to get your stuff so accurate to get it to the retail store. And then on top of that, the retail store must be so price sensitive as well because people will not buy the products as we look at potatoes. People just buy more macaroni. And now the price of macaroni is bloody increasing as well because of the higher demand. This is getting insane. And the one million jobs that will, that, 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 that will get lost, it will be devastating on the economy because it will not just be domestic workers and it will not just be farm workers, but it will be coming from your hospitality industry as well because they just can't. And then these guys are coming with the minimum wage that will be on the 1st of March. Give me a fucking break. You know what, politicians, is just fucking up this economy to its utmost best. It is really sad. It is really, really sad and painful. And I'm really feeling sorry because it definitely will reach 1 million, 1 million jobs because you can't, you can't lift up minimum wages during a fucking pandemic or plandemic. All the best, South Africa, but on the 1st of March, and I'm sure the big nose will talk about it um, in his State of the Nation address to be proud of, of this shit laws but that is it from my side for today please don't forget to register on the link below and get your free account free classes free signals and also you can get i will give you advice on which robot to select if you are lazy also <laughs> to trade for yourself but there's some very good um, robots to actually select from so that is it from my side i hope you guys enjoy today's show and then i will see you guys tomorrow at the same time bye bye the champ is here the champ is here